Hey everybody, Garrett with Old Breed Outdoors here again and we're going to do another Field to Table episode here. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the content we've had up on this Field to Table series so far. You know, we have all the stuff from last year. If you haven't seen that, check that out. And then this year we're trying to kind of expand things a little bit so we're not just doing the processing side of things but also the cooking side of things. And that's what we're going to do here today. On well, today's menu is venison enchiladas. Um, we did this a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago, um, where I did a roast, shredded it. My wife made her her, venice, her um, enchiladas with with the shredded uh, venison, and man, I can, let me tell you, it was amazing. Um, for today, though, I wanted to try something a little different. Um, I mean, it's still enchiladas, and I just want to try a different recipe. And I, what I did is I, I looked up um, um, Danielle Pruitt's. Uh, venison enchilada recipe. I really love a lot of her recipes. Um, my two go-to's is Daniel Pruitt and then um, Hank Shaw. I've got his book, Buck Buck Moose, which is phenomenal. Um, if you're like me, who can you know you can you have some cooking skill set, but you're not a uh, you know super awesome at it. I recommend that book because it's really helping out. It's simple, easy to do. At any rate, what I'm going to do, so the recipe calls for, um, in the, the main uh, thing is uh, ground venison, but you can also use the shredded um, venison as well, which is what I prefer in the enchiladas anyways, so I'm going to do it that way. So the first thing I've got here is a, is a nice, nice roast off of one of the deer I shot this year. Balled it out overnight and throw it in here in the crock pot and then I'm going to season it so I've got a teaspoon of salt calls for kosher salt but I've got sea salt will work just fine so sprinkle that on top here and then the next one's quarter teaspoon of black pepper so I've got my black pepper here quarter teaspoon give or take sprinkle that on top And then some oregano, same thing, quarter teaspoon, give or take, sprinkle that on top. Okay, this is the same. So, if you were doing um, you know, the ground venison instead, you do the same thing with the seasonings, except you're just going to brown that ground venison in on the stove there. And then the last one is uh, ground cumin, so a quarter teaspoon of that. We'll sprinkle that in here. Okay. All right. Next up, we gotta chop some vegetables. So we'll be right back. Okay. So next, onion. We need half an onion. So let's get this guy here cut up. Half a yellow onion, it says. Set that part aside. Chopped. Obviously, we need to peel off our stuff here. Get my little bucket here. I compost all of my stuff here, so I save all of the pieces here. Throw that in my bucket so I can dump it in the compost pile later today. All right, so we'll get these chopped up. I'm really bad at chopping onions, but that's all right. I just do the best I can. So if you're doing this in the with the ground venison, you're going to uh, pull your you'll brown the venison, and then you'll pull it out, set it aside. And then you're going to throw in the onion, and then we got some garlic here. And you're going to throw the onion and garlic in the pan, saute that up until the onion is uh, is browned, and then uh, set that aside. So that that's the filling for your your uh, enchiladas. So what I'm doing here, and this will be just fine. though it's a slight variation. Is uh, I'm just going to chop these up, and I'll throw the garlic in to the uh, crock pot here with these onions and the roast. And I'm going to let this sit for quite a while and um, it'll get nice and tender and it'll be 
really good. So, I mean, this is pretty much exactly how I did it last time. The only difference, like, with the way I did it last time with the roast was I used some barbacoa seasoning um, to with the roast in the crock pot, and man, it came out just just fine. So, this will be good. I'm just gonna. This is gonna be for the filling, and then we'll come back and we're gonna make the uh, the sauce later. Now, for the garlic, it calls for three cloves minced, but. Um, Again, I mincing up some garlic is not my thing. So you can use just the stuff that's already comes in the jar. There's a handy dandy little note on there if you never noticed it. Half of a teaspoon of this equals one clove of garlic. So I'm gonna put a teaspoon and a half of garlic in this crock pot. All right. So now we are all set. I'm just going to take a fork here, push some of this around, make sure we've got a good even distribution of everything. All right. Okay, so last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of water in the bottom here because this is going to be sitting all day. I'm going to get some juices here, but I don't want this to dry out. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of water. This is no different than like with the barbacoa or anything else. Um, they always tell you to mix in a little bit of water. So I'm not gonna do too much. I'll keep an eye on it throughout the day. If I need to add some water, I will. So take this, throw it in my crock pot. I'm gonna put this on low because it's nine o'clock in the morning. And I'm not gonna probably eat until around six, so that gives me a good nine hours of uh, sitting in the in the crock pot. Um, well, it'll be before six. I'll pull it out, but I'll probably get a good eight hours in the crock pot, get it all cooked down nice and tender, and then shred it up, and we'll be ready to go for the next step. So I'll see you guys in probably about eight hours, and we'll get busy on putting all these the rest of this together. We're gonna do the there's the sauce that we gotta make and then we gotta fill all the uh, all the tortillas and put them in a casserole dish and throw it in the oven. So we'll see you back here later today. All right, welcome back. It's almost dinner time. At least I gotta start getting this going. So we're almost there. So first step for to, for now is gonna get this oven preheated to 400 degrees. So. Before you start doing all the rest of this stuff, get that oven preheated to 400 degrees. It's going to take a minute and then uh, start doing all your prep work. But I've got all my stuff here prepped and I'm ready to get this roast shredded up and let that sit and soak in its juices a little bit while I make the chili gravy. So let's get this out here at the crock pot here and uh, start shredding. So this is shredding up pretty nice. Um, pretty glad that uh, I put that little bit of water in there that I did. But I think that may have helped. You know, between a little bit of water and then its own juices and everything, kind of mixing together here, keeping it nice and moist and really getting this nice and tender. So, but uh, I mean, this has been in here, it's 4.30 right now. We've been in here since nine o'clock this morning. So seven and a half hours of sitting in here. But uh, I want to get this shredded up right now um, so they can sit a little bit and uh, soak up some moisture. So we'll get this done and we'll move on to the gravy. Okay, well we've got that all shredded up and now we're ready to start on the uh, on the uh, chili gravy that we're going to put inside and on the outside. So if we were doing this with the ground meat, you would just be using a, a, a sauté pan um, to brown the, the, the meat in and then do our onion and uh, garlic and then take that, um, set it all aside. And then in the same pan, we would uh, then do the gravy. But since we didn't do that, we're going to use a saucepan here to make our gravy and uh, you know, kind of have to make a few adjustments, but not many. So what it does say is like if you have a bunch of leftover oil from uh, making your, your ground meat and when the saute and the onions, to drain that off and then you can have a little tiny bit in there, but if you have anything more than that, drain that off. So for this, what we're going to do is I'm going to start heating up this saute pan a little bit. So medium heat is what we're looking for here. Um, so it says oil or lard. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I have some of this duck lard right here. I'm going to use that because I don't want to use oil. And I'm using the duck because people in my house have an aversion to some of the other things. So we, just, I have this. I'm not going to go buy, you know, a quarter cup worth of, uh, you know, lard from something else. So I'll measure out a quarter cup here. Throw that in, start heating that up. And then the next step is going to be our flour here. So a quarter cup of all-purpose flour. Let me get this lard out of the way. So that lard heating up in here. I got a quarter cup of flat all-purpose flour. I'm going to take this and start sprinkling it in. Grab my whisk, start whisking. No different than if you're making gravy for turkey or something, right? So what we're doing here, cooking this down, making a roux. We want that cook down a little bit for a couple minutes while we uh, get the rest of this ready. So we want to kind of get like a lightly golden brown, brown look to it. Okay, next is going to be onion and uh, garlic. So it calls for uh, grated onion or garlic. I'm just going to use the powdered stuff which I have right here. So it calls for uh, two, two teaspoons of each if you're using grated, but since I'm using um, the powdered stuff, you use one teaspoon of the dried. So give it a stir. That's looking pretty good. Keeping it very low heat right now. Uh, get this going. So and you cook this down quickly, so there's my one teaspoon of the garlic. Now my onion powder, another teaspoon of that. Throw that in. And give this a stir. Okay, next, two cups of stock, so you can use venison stock, or in my case, I'm using chicken stock because I don't have any venison stock. Nice and nice, slow, pour this in while stirring. So now the next thing is gonna be tomato paste. So I need, I got some tomato paste here. I need one and a half ta uh, tablespoons. So grab this. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna mix in this tomato paste with my whisk. Get it nice and smooth. All right, so now I need my teaspoon measure again. So half a teaspoon of black pepper. Add that in there. So one teaspoon of the cumin. One teaspoon of the oregano. Now that I've had that, I'm going to mix this up real quick because the next is uh, my chili powder. So it calls for ancho or red chili powder. So I've got some. Don't recommend using actual anything like the chili powder that you, you buy at the store. And it just says chili powder because if you look at the ingredients, it's got all the things that we just put in this in it. So use red chili powders. And you need a. Uh, tablespoons of that so one and a half or sorry two and a half tablespoons of this so what will happen is this will start thickening up right away so you want to get this in there stir it up thicken it up and take it off the heat so we'll put this in I almost forgot my salt so I need one tablespoon or I'm sorry teaspoon of salt a tablespoon would be a lot and just like it says it's going to thicken up so take that off the heat that looks good, my friends. Okay. We can set that aside and let it sit for a second. Next up is uh, getting the tortillas ready. So, I've actually never done this, so we're going to learn together maybe. If you already know, if you do, give me the criticisms in the comments here. But uh, I'm going to fry some tortillas and uh, for the enchiladas. So, I've got a saute pan here. It says, you know, a teaspoon of... Uh, and larger oil, so I've got my duck lard here. 
and I'm just going to put this in here and heat that up. So I'm going to bring this um, oil and heat the oil until it starts to sputter a little bit. Use my tongs, grab a tortilla here, and then what it says 15 seconds per side, and then it should puff up a little bit, the tortilla will bubble up a little bit, but stay soft and pliable. So 30 seconds per. I've got 12 tortillas here. I'm going to make total, the recipe calls for 12 to 14 um, tor uh, enchiladas, so, or tortillas to make the enchiladas. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, looks like we're ready to go here. Turn my vent fan on here. I made a mistake of doing that not too long ago. All right, that's the first one. Did it bubble up? Still nice and soft and pliable. Well, we'll have more to go. All right, that's all set, and we are ready to uh, build some tortillas. So these came out pretty good. Smells like fried tortillas in the house. Uh, not too bad for my first time. So the note, um, make sure, well, you're gonna have to, we're talking, there's only a teaspoon of the oil or lard in the pan, so you're gonna to add a little bit as you go. So I kinda, there towards the last half of the batch, I found that, you know, just adding a half a teaspoon in between each tortilla was more than enough in that size pan to do what I need to do. So it looks good, worked out great. Now I'm gonna build. So I've got, you can use a cast iron, you can use a, you know, a casserole, you know, dish, whatever you wanna use. For me, I've got two small rectangle uh, casserole dishes here because I have to make two separate batches. My daughter's got a dairy allergy, so hers have to be um, dairy free. And the only dairy in this is the cheese. So I'll make her uh, a batch here with, with no cheese in it and a batch for myself that would have cheese in it. So that's why I've got two separate dishes here. So first step, and as promised, this uh, um, great, the chili gravy came out really uh, nice and thick. Give that a little taste here. Man, <laughs> that's good. That's really good. It's got some good heat to it, but not too bad. And that would go well. So take a little bit of this and we're gonna lightly, like a thin coat of this on the uh, bottom of our, or of our pans. Now next step is to build these. So take my tortilla, I'm going to take a, a little bit of this chili gravy, put it in there, grab some filling. So I left it in my crock pot and I'm glad I did. Um, what I did, I shred this up and left it in there with the juices. It did reconstitute a little bit of those juices, but this is nice and moist and super tender looking. So we'll get some of the filling here. Fill these up. Wish my wife is here because I'm not very good at this whole rolling of tortillas. So we'll roll that up. And there's one tortilla. Seam side down. Okay, I've built those. I've got the cheese and the non-cheese. Now we're going to take some of this chili gravy and generously coat the top it says. All right. So I think that's about as generous as if we are going to get with our sauce. So I'll try and spread it around a little bit. See what that does. And the last thing I need to do is sprinkle some of this cheese on top of mine. All right, so we got a nice hot oven here. I'm gonna throw these in here. We're going to cook those for 10 minutes. One, zero, when done, hold temp, next. 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back. We're going to take the foil off and then uh, cook them for another five minutes. So we see in 10. All right, our 10 minutes are up. Let's get this tin foil off in here. Ooh, yeah, they look nice. Looking real nice. All right, and then we're gonna set this timer for five more minutes. There we go. See you in five minutes, and we'll be uh, getting ready to check out some enchiladas. I got some rice going and some beans going, and we're gonna have this nice little dinner tonight.
So these look and smell amazing. So pretty excited. So we're gonna let these cool down a little bit. I'm gonna cover them up a little bit. Finishing up the rice, uh, cook up these beans, and then we'll be ready to taste test this deliciousness. We've got the main judge, Autumn. I submit to you, Danielle Pruitt's enchiladas. She works for me, Dieter, and does recipes and stuff. Don't tell mom. All right, my turn. See if I like them. There's no way they're better than mom's. Those are good. Got a little bit of spice to them, not too much. Mm. Not too much. What? Too spicy? Mm. Okay. Mom thinks they're too spicy. They're delicious. I'm gonna eat this up. Well, folks, as always, really appreciate you guys following along. Dinner was a huge success tonight, as you saw. Uh, Autumn liked it. I liked it, and uh, I've got no complaints. So I'll definitely make that again. Appreciate you guys following along. Do us a huge favor, reach down, hit that subscribe button, and continue to follow along. We're gonna keep this Field, field and Table series running. We've got some more uh, stuff coming. Uh, I have uh, one more uh, processing you know, piece that I'm gonna do for this year, and that's gonna be making a big batch of Italian sausage. And then the rest of the stuff is going to be more of this type of content. So hopefully you guys are liking this. This is like the third or fourth episode that we've done um, of this type of, of content. So if you do like it, leave a comment, give us the like, and you know, let us know what you think. And if there's anything else you would like us to, like us to put out there. So thanks as always, and uh, keep coming back. We'll see you next time.